sure knows how to fight for his defense. In starting all his limbs are tense. Power glistens in his eyes, he strikes. Bruce Lee is probably the most important martial artist figure in Asia's movie industry, and in fact, the most prominent figure of the martial arts community. Super charisma, super speed, you name it. There's no doubt that Bruce has given a strong appeal to not only for the Asian audiences, but the audiences worldwide. Though his career was short, the impact he made was immeasurable. So much of a fan base that there's even a subgenre of the movie called Bruce Ploitation was created. But that's the story for the other time. My point is, Bruce Lee has given the strong impact on all of us around the world, including myself, of course. And as you can see, you can consider myself as absolutely a mad fan for Bruce Lee. Might not be a hardcore, but it's still quite insane how Bruce has impacted on me. I got a lot of Bruce related stuff around me. Bruce Lee quote wall frame, Bruce Lee action figures that I got it for the gift and I still treasure it till this very day. God damn, who could forget all of his movies? I've covered my Bruce Lee DVD collection a while ago, but I do have a Bruce Lee DVD box set along with my personal favorite, Enter the Dragon. Oh, and of course, being that I'm a maniac for Bruce, I also have a Tower of Death, a sequel to a Game of Death, even though he has nothing to do with this film at the first place. And of course, one of my important Bruce Lee related items in my collection is probably his unofficial Famicom game known as Bruce Lee, also known as The Dragon. And this is quite special because there were no official Famicom game based on the Bruce Lee, but the unlicensed company known as Rammer International or commonly known as Rinko published it and it was developed by ex Satchin members. If you don't know their other games, they also made this magnitude of game called Bao Ching Tian. Actually, let's take a peek of this game. Yep, that's the quality level from the X Sachin for you, and this is story for the other time. With all being seriousness though, it is quite interesting to see that the Famicom game based on Bruce Lee was developed in 1995, and possibly the title, The Dragon, might perhaps be based on the Super Nintendo game known as Dragon The Bruce Lee Story, a game based on the Hollywood Bruce Ploitations movie starring Jason Scott Lee with the, um, the portrayal of Bruce's life. But with that point aside though, it's hard to believe that no other official licensed company in their mind ever decides to make a game based on Bruce Lee, much like how Hudson Soft and Iram did with Jackie Chan with two games. I mean, sure, even way before this game's rare existence, there were some Bruce Lee games for the, um, the other platforms as well. But if you know me for a longest period of time, I'm more of a maniac for the Famicom games and the world of pirate scenes from the East Asia. So this Bruce Lee game alone is good enough to pique my interest at the first place. And so how does this game hold up to today's standards then? Well, let's take a look. The game starts off with the 8-bit version of the Way of the Dragon theme, albeit quite a poor one, but pretty faithful nonetheless for the, um, the Bruce Lee's legacy. The title of the screen also looks promising with the Bruce Lee and his nunchuck. The menu options screen is pretty basic for the pirated gaming scene, especially it was common for the pirated games to including an ability to give a player more extra lives. 
But interestingly enough though, the game also has a built-in instruction manual with all the moves. So I guess Nintendo Switch games are not the first the first ones to do that from the start with their games nowadays. Way to go, Ramar! You're in the future. And it's also interesting to see that the Arabic is the option for the language. Not really a common language to um, pick from, so I'm assuming this game was also released in the subcontinent of Asia as well. The game also has a battle mode, which it seems like you can pick a character or source, but in reality you only get to play it as Bruce Lee, even if you pick the other characters. And no, you can't play it as, as a two player, so um, what's the point I might ask? On to the actual gameplay, right from the beginning you can clearly see that the main character and the boss's sprites were mostly taken from the Mortal Kombat series, and they're not ashamed of it. In Bruce's case, I'm guessing it's based on Liu Kang, the game innocently starts up with as a some sort of a one to one combat game. Funnily enough, the first boss is Scorpion. Oh, I'm sorry, my mister. I meant to say, um, Suzuki. And let me just get this out of the way. Most of the bosses are pretty easy once you figure out the pattern. However, sometimes the computer's AI move, they can pull their moves wherever they want while you're constantly battling with the control scheme. Oh, and I'll get there, don't worry. But yeah, Scorpion, pretty easy, and next thing you realize that this is not just the fighting beat em up games, but it is also a platformer. What's quite remarkable is that most of the stages are actually based on Bruce Lee's movies, at least the five notable ones, including The Game of Death, The Way of the Dragon, The Big Boss, and Fist of Fury. It's completely out of order in terms of the timeline, but I found that to be uh, quite a nice touch to say the least, managed to paying a tribute to the martial hero. In terms of the fighting moves, with Bruce has the most of them, such as punching, jump kicks, upper kicks, crouching kicks, you name it. But I found it to be way too sluggish and slow to pull the moves when the enemies are attacking or so, and hell, including the platforming section as well. And okay, I can understand if they wanted to go for the quote unquote realistic approach, you know, how most of the, um, the real martial artists would pull their moves in real life. But this is a through sleep for God's sake though. While inaccurate portrayal is understandable, I mean it's a game, granted. But wasn't Bruce Lee even in real life all about his super speed? In order for me to get the boost for the speed, or at least not to get damaged, I have to jump around and do the jump kick for the most most of the time through the whole stage. Fortunately, you do get an item though in these crate boxes, but let me tell you some advices. Don't ever stay close from the boxes because it's either you might get a dumpling or a friggin' time bone once you open it up. And I wouldn't usually mind too much about gambling for the items. This one can be way too much though. Half of the time, you can't even distinct which one has the bomb or not. This one doesn't have any indications on the boxes. So I'm just stumbling across with the bomb for the most part. And the bomb can drain at least one out of three's energy, or in worst case, half of them. You also have a nunchuck, which again is a very nice touch for them to give Bruce something for his iconic trademark. But if you get hit by the enemy once or twice, you lose it immediately. Even if you do get the thing, it's still a close range attack and I think it does less damage than the actual um, kicking or punching so I can't really recommend it too much in my point of view. And speaking of enemies, it's not that it's hard to kill them, I mean they get killed after you give them some good 2 or 3 um, jump kicks to their head or so. But the structure of how these enemies are coming after is so annoying. When you get hit by one of them, sometimes you lose at least 4 to 5 times of the energy. And that occurs when you're trying to pull your moves like the upper kick or a punch. By the time you hit them, you already lost partial amount of energy. So my quick routine of giving them a damage is again to jump kick to their head. But even then, the huge amount of enemies counts can come right at you at the same time. The graphics are alright for its time, and I found it half ironic and half impressive with the fact that they followed most of the stages right 
in terms of the movie that is based on. For instance, the way the dragon is set on Italy, the big boss is set in Thailand. But taking consideration with the completely awkward enemy choices for each stage is like, you know, Little Mac? Sure, why not for the, um, the Way of the Dragon? But Japanese Karate Man? By no means I should nitpicking the movie that was all about Billy Lowe trying to fight against with the um, gangster boss while he's trying to survive in his movie career. How does this background match to that film? Finally, I beat him! Yes! Now let me see the ending. Alright, hold hold up. Are you serious? I didn't actually skip or anything, I've, and I've beaten this game second time as well, and it always ends up like this. Well, I think I've seen enough. So, what's my final verdict on this game? Eh, but by no means, it's not an interesting game though. It is one of those funny bad games that you somehow come back for some bizarre reason, mainly because of the um, idea of having Bruce Lee by subsequently using a Mortal Kombat sprite. I found it that to be priceless and hilarious, but it does have somewhat of its charm as well on its own nature for the unlicensed pirated NES game. All I can say is, the game had its somewhat ambition. If you are a huge fan of Bruce Lee just like myself, and ever get to come across with this game, even if it's quite a bad game, I think it's still worth a look and add to your um, special Bruce Lee collection. Because let me tell you, in the end, this bizarreness somehow made me to even appreciate Bruce Lee even more. Just the fact that there are people who wants to recognize Bruce Lee and give somewhat of an awareness. Bottom line, the dragon is one of those weird category of unlicensed game, but certainly a game that gives me more warm spot for the Bruce Lee as well. Keep on being water, and until next time my friends, this was Kevin HW Son, signing out.